What's up superstars, it's Phil here. On this video, I'm gonna show you this really cool print. It may look like a regular full-size print, but it's actually super lightweight, super breathable, because it has a half-tone knockout effect here. So you definitely wanna watch to the very end. We're gonna show you exactly how we accomplish this, how we get this done, and we're also gonna share this graphic with and without the half-tone effect so that you guys can follow along and learn how to get this done so that you guys can be pros at getting this done moving forward. So let's go. How to get a black knockout halftone effect. Right click on your layer to duplicate it. Unlock and rename your original file. Rename your duplicate layer. Go to image, image size, resize the width of your image, change your resolution to 300. Right click the top layer, go to duplicate layer, where it says documents, drop down to new, click OK. Now go to image, mode, grayscale, click discard, then go to image, adjustments, click on levels. You can play with this based on your image, but I set the whites to 50 and the blacks to 3, click OK. Go to image, mode, bitmap, click OK to flatten layers, 300 dpi. 30 frequency, 22 angle. Okay, control A to select all, control C to copy. Go back to your original image, create a mask, hold alt and click on the white thumbnail, control V to paste, now click the other thumbnail. Hide the original layer to reveal the halftone effect. Create an adjustment layer, go to solid color, move it below your halftone layer, move your original to the top. There you go, that's how you create the black knockout halftone effect. If you found this helpful, do me a quick favor and click the like button to support our tutorials. It's free for you and really helps us out. Remember to subscribe for more tutorials like this one. Here's the difference between the original and the halftone. Now let's get this printed onto a 12 by 15 transfer and look at the results. All right, we're back. I have the DTF transfer that we just printed with the graphic on it. So check it out. All right, let's see what Jason got printed for us today. Oh, that's pretty cool. So what, we're, what I'm seeing here is a pretty big full color image, but it has a black knockout effect to this. Yep, we did a black knockout to it. So you can see it all over here. Here, check it out, check out the yep. other side. Because originally what you would see here on this, on this print it's a very big and heavy print. It might not be very breathable in the front and it might feel heavier. So there are ways to make this print feel lighter. And so I'm pretty sure Jason did his magic on his artwork, got a chance to remove all the black and at the same time create a halftone effect so that it still preserves some of the details, shadows, and it's actually very, very light to wear when you put this on. I think something I wanted to point out though is some of the detail if you look on the other side, there are some areas that didn't get the under base of the white layer on it, the adhesive for DTF printing. Uh, so those might not transfer very well, but again, this is the halftone effect. The point is for it to, to fade in and it won't really affect the final result. Uh, if anything, it'll make it more airy in that area. Yeah, so it's just a blend of it, like Jason was saying. The white is what holds the glue and it's what's gonna create this different look that we're gonna be pressing on. So we'll show you basically the before and after. You'll see the magic once we press this on a shirt and how it uses the black detail, the, the shirt, the black on the shirt to create the black highlight details here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna be pressing on and how this is gonna look afterwards because it is a job well done. And if all large size shirts are knocked out like this, this is definitely gonna be a game changer for that brand. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna be pressing on. So for those wondering what size this print is, let's go ahead and take a look. I've got a width here of 12 inches, and then we've got a height here of 15 inches. So it's a pretty big, nice, solid print that we're gonna be doing. And before I trim this, I'm gonna talk about the shirt that we're gonna be using. This is a lat apparel t-shirt. It is 100% cotton. We're gonna be using a size large. And the Lat Apparel actually has all the product dimensions and everything like that. Not dimensions, but all the specs down here. So you always wanna check here on their satin label. This is a model 6901. 
and what we're gonna work with here it has a printable front area I'm gonna just do the, the shoulder to shoulder area on the sleeves and I'm getting about let's say 17 and a half inches max so that's what I'm getting if you're gonna be doing a print that starts from the top right here and it has an overall height from bottom to top at 26 inches so what we'll do next is we're gonna go ahead and trim our designs I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the, our color bar. You wanna leave yourself some space, just like that. So because we don't have a laser leveler, leveler here, I'm gonna go ahead and use our trick so that I can get the midpoint. I'm just basically folding the design halfway. I'm just gonna briefly crease the tip. I'm gonna repeat the process right here, line up the edges, and then I'm gonna briefly crease the tip or the edge and then this is going to give me the midpoint of the design. So that's an easy and quick way to eyeball and get the print set straight. So next thing we're gonna do is grab our shirt. Let's go in and lay it on our press. This is a Geo Knight 16 by 20. Going to make sure that the neckline is outside of the press and everything is nice and straight. Making sure that the sides are completely even. Flatten it down just to make sure. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the transfer right here. We're actually going to use our four finger uh, tip trick. Uh, this basically gives us about three inches between the top. So I want to use my finger here from the from the from my pinky all the way to my forefinger and then I'm going to press it down and this is roughly three inches from the top so now that I got the top even I'm going to go ahead and reach out to the side and I'm going to go ahead and use three fingers in this scenario and that will give me the center point now top middle and side is all three fingers in width so that's going to be a pretty straight print press that we're going to be doing so now that everything is set, I want to make sure I check my temperature. It's at 300 degrees. We're going to be pressing this at seven seconds. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab a Teflon sheet. So we're using a Teflon sheet here to cover our prints because this particular heat press doesn't have it set up yet. You can actually set this up and use magnets to hold it in place but we're gonna go ahead and just use this as a sheet to put on top of it. And this actually helps so that the transfer doesn't lift prematurely with the heat press. It does that sometimes. So as a fail safe, you definitely wanna use one of these. So now that it's set, 300 degrees, seven seconds, heavy pressure, I'm gonna go ahead and press. Because this is a big print and there's a bunch of little uh, half tone effects, you want to help the transfer get as much of it transferred over. So a tip is to use a microfiber cloth and rub this through. Again, it's not absolutely needed, but when you are dealing with a print like this, this is going to help. So take this tip. All right, let's go ahead and do a peel. Use one hand, hold down the shirt. There you go. Look at that. Most of it transferred through all the way, but you do see some remnants of some leftover black. This is standard because as we mentioned, all the light, tiny de details did not get the white backing to it, but this is pretty good. This is over 90, 95% transfer rate, so it's pretty good. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna flip this around for that second press, but the thing is be before I press it here, I also wanna use this sheet again. 
because if you just press this underneath here, it's gonna transfer over to your heat press and that, guys, is gonna transfer onto your next shirt. So you definitely wanna use one of these. I'm gonna trigger this for seven seconds again and I'm gonna press it once more. guys let's go ahead and take a look at this print wow guys look at that look at all the details it was able to preserve and by sticking my hand in there it feels a lot lighter you don't have the full solid backing right here but the overall print which is her her brown jacket is a half tone effect so this is really really a nice solid design retail quality and there's a special effect to this. Not everybody can do this effect with a black knockout. So when you have customers that are touching this with their hands, they're gonna just gonna feel how soft it is. And this is like a leather type jacket that she's wearing, so it is perfect. It holds all the little tiny details. It is more solid on the edges right here where it is full, but it creates depth and it creates a texture to this. So this is really nice. Now, again, Jason did a really good job by doing a black knockout here with, with preserving the details. And if you didn't do it this way and you did a gradient effect here, you would get something sort of like this. We have a video that we talk about gradients and how it would create this white cloud base here. And this is not ideal. So you definitely, in this scenario, would do a black knockout with a half tone effect. So guys, this is one way to solve the gradient issue by doing a black knockout half tone effect. But you do want to make sure that you guys are watching our next video where we're going to talk where we talk about actually gradients and how this can be an issue. We go through different samples, so you want to make sure that you see the outcome, the effect of what the gradient is going to be doing on your transfer. Make sure you watch that video because it is super important, especially if you're a shop and you're trying to explain the process of gradients to your customer, it is really important to know what the outcome is gonna be before you take on that job. So make sure you guys watch that video here. It's gonna really cover all the, the different options that we have so that you can see the outcome of that gradient print. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure you guys smash the like button and I'll catch you guys on that next one.